All right, everybody. So I got a G80 coming. Uh, it's uh, I'm picking up Performance Delivery Center on the 17th of November. Uh, I didn't plan ahead. I should have. Um, I didn't know when it was going to be here. I didn't really have much production information. And then uh, Tom from uh, uh, BMW Wilmington, North Carolina, emailed me, said, all right, get you ready for delivery. So it's coming in a few weeks. And now I got the mad scramble of trying to get the parts because this car is going to go up to Helen and it's going to live there. And so I need to bring it here to Florida, put it largely together, do all the hard stuff here and then send it up there because I got a bunch of people that want to rent it from me. So I was sitting at Kate's cheerleading thing today <laughs> and I was watching uh, Brian's videos on the AWE exhaust and the Daler exhaust and trying to put a spreadsheet together. And I'm like, why don't I just text Sean and Brian, the two world's foremost expert on the G80 platform. And why don't we just do a quick call? And then of course I would do everything last minute, like every YouTuber, like, <laughs> can we do it tonight? Because we're all going to SEMA. So we'll be out for a whole nother week. And so here we are. So Sean from Precision Sport Industries in Orlando. Sean and I have been friends for 20 years now, um, messing around with BMWs. Um, he's, uh, he's my go-to whenever I mess something up, I send it to him and they fix it. And then Brian, I think you and I met through a mutual friend, um, yep. um, um, Bob, um, who is the, uh, Porsche guy up in, um, up in New York city that, uh, he was one of the first garages I've ever designed. And so he connected us years ago, probably what, four or five years ago now. Yeah. That time flew. And then you guys are technically competitors. But the cool thing about the BMW tuner community is that um, you all seem to get along pretty well, right? There's <laughs> there's enough business for all. Um, yeah. So, you know, the guys at EAS, my buddies at IND, you know, you guys together. I mean, we all seem to get along in this world of the BMW world, which, you know, BMW guys have a, uh, I think BMW in the non-BMW world has a negative stigma. But I've experienced nothing but amazing inside of the community. I think it's why I feel like I'm a BMW guy, you know, you know right. through and through. I aspire yeah, to be a Porsche guy. Um, <laughs> we all do. Uh, but really, I mean, I'm a BMW guy. So, uh, Brian, introduce yourself to the, to, the, to the group. You have a YouTube channel and then a business yep. where you, 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 you produce parts and, and provide resources. So introduce yourself. And then, Sean, you'll introduce right after him. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Brian Kiefer. I am CEO of Keys Motorsports, and we specialize in basically two things, right? So we specialize in BMW media and modifications. So um, I did have a point where I had a full out shop and all of that. And I realized, you know what? I quit my day job in healthcare to make videos to show people how to do stuff at home and to help them out with parts. So, uh, you know, it it was definitely a painful process, but it was like, you know what, let's skinny this back and just kind of really get laser focused on that. You know, it's hard to get uh, not too distracted with, you know, Porsche and with, you know, McLe friends with McLaren. My friends have really cool cars, so it's like always really tempting. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's basically that's basically it. We make we make media that sells car parts and that's really like the main area that we focus. And it's all on um, modern day BMWs. So the F series BMW, the G series, and um, I actually have some, one of the uh, new electric cars too. So, that, you know, just trying to kind of dabble in like just the newer stuff. The new M2, obviously, when that when that comes, so that's another car I'm interested in. Yeah. So any anything modern, you know, BMW. Where do you go back to? E92 and up, generally. Honestly, the amount of E series we do is like this small. We really like with F series is really our sweet spot. Like our sweet spot is more like three and four series, whether it's like, you know, F30, 335, 340, or like the F80 M3 and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then into the G series. So it's more like that three and four series is kind of where we're at. We're branching out a little bit more, but um, that's, you know, it's just kind of our sweet spot. And we got, we got really good at like one thing. So if you go to our YouTube channel, that's, that's most of what you're going to see. We have an X7, we have an I4 M50, you know, and some other stuff, but that's where we focus. Sean, how about you? What's your share with the, the people, your background? I know they've seen us together in many, many videos <laughs> over the years, but um, just for those may, that may be new, especially the G series enthusiasts, the F, you know, F80 enthusiasts, um, give us a little background. Sure. I mean, I've had the shop since 2008. 
and it's been a, a shop. We, we work on cars and build cars and um, that was the focus. And then a few years back, I started doing e-commerce sales and started doing YouTube more so. Um, but our range that we work on is we do everything from the new G80 about this call all the way back to E10, which is, you know, E3 too, which is 2002 in Bavaria's and 1960s. So I do 60s all the way up. Um, again, at my shop is work. We work on cars. We do heavy. We do motors. We do all of that. Um, and I'm just getting into the Brian and the you of this <laughs> business, which is, you know, making videos and having fun and showing people what to do. So that's pretty new for me. Um, and then you hit me up way back with the E92 um, with the blue one, kind of wanted some guidance on some wheels and things. And you and I just hit it off. We have similar personalities and have attention to detail and things. And I mean, we've just been friends ever since. That's been a great friendship. And then, you know, Brian knows me because I do, I also have the distribution for Moton and ASC suspension. So Brian knows me from, from that and from YouTube stuff and we're close too. So this is a neat call to be on and I'm happy to be here. Well, well, I, I, text text you every week. I didn't know that. I texted you this yeah. morning. I said, are you and Brian cool? <laughs> just to be sure, you know, I don't want to like uh, sort of get, get he's like, oh, we talk like almost every day. So I'm like, okay, well, this will work then. This'll I mean, work. I always say the same thing. But it's a big industry, but it's a small world. And if you, yeah. if you are in this business and you do anything right, everyone knows each other. Yeah. It's a small, small little group. So and a lot of people tend to find, you know, like a channel that works best for them. Like a lot of companies, you know, are very focused on forums. I don't like forums. I do my own thing and we do on YouTube and I don't get in the weeds or, you know, try to get in the way of anybody else. It's like the people that are looking for, you know, companies like us on YouTube, you know, like I want to be the guy where you search for how to do something on your car, you know, on your F series, your G series, your G80, whatever, you know, like we run nines in the G80 and it's like, how do you do it? Like, you know, like that's kind of the, the path we want to go. It's like, you know, and I know some guys are heavy on Facebook. So it, it's really cool how, you know, a lot of these companies behind us, like I know Sean really well. And, um, you know, it's really cool how like everybody's kind of got their own space and we can all work together. It's, it's funny because I think a lot of us companies work together a lot more behind the scenes than anybody really realizes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got like yeah, like sure. my friends at IND do a lot of the paint stuff that pretty much everybody mm -hmm. shares in, and you know, and then you know, each of you have your specialty. I think the key here is the the, the key metric. Like Brian, you had a day job. I had a day job. Sean, you had a day job. We all had day jobs outside of the passion. Eventually, would you say the passion or the day job became an inconvenience <laughs> to the passion? Right? To the yeah, point that's a good to way where. To put it. It's a point to where like why I can't I can't do this day job anymore. I've got too much going on with the passion. And so here we are, you know, hopefully, you know, changing the world a bit and, and enjoying it. And uh, I don't know about you all, but I mean, working 14 hours a day, it doesn't feel like work. Like, I don't feel like I've worked an hour, even though I work way more <laughs> than I did when I avoided work at the day job, you know. Exactly. Trying to figure out sure. when's the next vacation. What's the next You know, vacation for me now is going to SEMA. Right. Which is, which is work, you know, so we're going to, well, a the moment I knew that I was doing the right thing is I never know what day it is. Like yeah. people come in and like, Oh, happy Thursday, whatever. I'm like, I didn't even realize it's, it's Saturday night right now. Right. It's Saturday. Yeah, you know, exactly. Night, you know? exactly. <laughs> so the only difficulty with that is, you know, alienating yourself from everybody, right. Family, friends, you know, that's that, that becomes the new balance in life is, I just want to do this like I'm at Kate's cheerleading thing, mod you know, choosing modifications for my car and aligning the next videos when I should be paying attention to, you know, to life. Yeah. That's the tricky part. So let's jump into the G80. And, I, and I'll, I think you guys both know this. I freaking hate it. I don't like what it <laughs> looks. Uh, I didn't want one. I wasn't going to get one. Um, I hate the F80. Um, you know, I love how the F80 looks. I think it's the best looking car like ever built, the M3 version. Uh, and yet here we are um, going down this path again. Um, I feel like every M3 needs to be experienced by every M3 enthusiast. Uh, and so the F80, I don't begrudge in having owned one for a couple of years, but it filled the spot and I checked the box. Same thing with the M2CS. I feel like I needed to own one. I'm doing the giveaway on that. 
Um, I, I feel like I needed to experience it. The one M I wanted to experience. Um, and then I wanted to be able to decide, is this something I want to keep long term? And so with the, with the destination OG concept, it now affords me the ability to get new M3s, new M2s and turn them over. All right. So this has been my dream. I need to figure out a way to justify, you know, losing my shirt on the <laughs> turnover of cars every six months or so. Uh, and so this is, you know, you guys have both figured out how to do that. And so this is a way for me to figure out how to not have to do a giveaway every time. And I'm going to let these very specific people that are borrowing my house also borrow the car for money. And I'd love to do that with a Cayman. I'd love to do that with a GT4 or, or a GT3, but you can't get them. It's not, it's just not a realistic endeavor. I can't go to the dealership and just get a new one every, you know, every couple of months. Whereas with an M3, it, it's not as expensive. Um, and it's an endeavor that I could, you know, I could line this up where I could get M3s and M2s every six months, get a new one and turn it over. Uh, and so I've decided to overlook the pig nose. And then you guys have done a lot of work to help us, you know, eliminate or at least reduce the pig nose. Uh, and then I like the S58 sound is not like the S55. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, the S55, I just can't, the equal length is freaking sounds worse. I just can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't stomach it. So the S58 is encouraging to me. And then I had to do ZF auto because people are going to be borrowing the thing. But, um, and so, so that's what I chose to do. I got an allocation for the yacht. Was it, how do we say Yare 50? The, yeah. The, the RA 50th anniversary. Uh, and then I did it in techno violet to match my E36, which now I'm getting rid of because the freaking E brake exploded the other day. The power steering rack was leaking. The, um, I just can't, I can't do it, Sean. I can't, I can't, I can't. The old, I just can't. We, we can't, we, we just gotta let me fix it permanently. And then you won't have those issues. Yeah, but it's just constant. It'll be constant breakage. The dash is vibrating. Uh, <laughs> Brian, I have like probably one of the nicest E36s in the world. And <laughs> yeah, but you you have to own that. You have to own those models. Like I, I own the '80s models, and I own the fact that they creep. And my E28, I mean, is I tried. Nice. I'm try. I tried it, and I'll but, check the box and. We're going on the G80, which I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll hate. But let's let's. I'm going to pull share my screen here. Let's get in. It's opposite her yapping all day, um, and let me share with you what I'm thinking here. So I'm pull, I built a little um, a little uh, Word doc here for us, as every good engineer should. <laughs> so um, um, well, we should kind of work through these different areas, and you guys can kind of chime in on what I think we should do. I'd like to finalize what I'm going to buy. Uh, and then, um, we'll figure out where to get it, you know, and, um, and then I love with your experience input, what should we do, uh, on the car, knowing that this car will probably live with me for like nine months, nine to 12 months. Um, and then I'll either get another one in some sort of other unique color, uh, or possibly the new, you know, the new G87 M2, um, could probably possibly replace it. I think the M2 is a better car for the house in the mountains smaller mm -hmm. a little more compact uh, so i was thinking brakes you guys correct me if i'm wrong um there's nothing really to do there i mean this is a mountain car not a track car what do you guys think yeah i mean i have my uh i have my pads that we develop that are like 50 percent less dust and about 25 percent more performance and i made some stainless lines that are made by hel from the uk so um but you have carbon ceramics coming so right yeah, you're good on that. I don't think it's worthwhile to flush it and put just leave the factory brake fluid. I mean, we're not going to be, I mean, I don't think people are going to be. I would leave it. I don't think it's necessary, to be honest. So now exterior is where the big money is going to be spent from from my perspective. Um, um, Brian, you have, uh, I love interested in your input. You have the keys line. Mm -hmm. um, we have Vorsteiner. You have 57 other brands. Uh, we also have the new Ad Adro, Adro, what is it? Adro front bumper. Adro. Yep. Yeah. So we do a lot with them right now. So that that's going to be something that's coming down. I don't know exactly the release date on that, um, but it's definitely a, a very unique look. I think I'm mixed on it, if I'm honest, because I think a lot of people hated the G80 so much and they wanted something, but something didn't come fast enough. So then it was like, 
now it's coming out. So it's like, well, people are kind of over the front, but I'm you know, not. Yeah. Then it, go for it. So, I don't know why it's going to be ready, though. That's the only problem. Yeah. Um, There's like, it's like a non ETA starter. And the reason like no one could do it is because you have to re engineer. I mean, you, I mean, they, I think they did it. I, I don't know that company too well. I think Brian does more, but yeah. I know that some of the other companies that claimed they were doing it were not going to do it quick if they could, because um, that bumper's crazy and the, the venting on the G80 is, is all functional and, and, you know, has some engineering, a lot of engineering to it. So this is what we're talking about here. This is the, the, the Agile front bumper, which extends the um, extends the bumper, mm-hmm. shrinks the grills, adds the larger um, brake ducting grills here. What are these called? Mm-hmm. They, those are called the. Um, I just had it up ducks. here. The you had it on your site, Brian. Um, these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The aero vent. Yeah, the vent down yeah. and, the, and the front air dam. So um, maybe this would be on 2.0 of the car. You can see that the difference in what this bumper would do, but we don't know how it's going to fit. We don't know. Um, I mean, that's that's the the thing with aftermarket front bumpers. I mean, how often have you guys seen it where you have a really a wee fit? I mean, so on that we so we do a lot with Adro and we do a lot with um, like M Sport bumpers and, and conversion bumpers and that. It all depends on where you have it made and whatnot. All of this stuff, all and everything that I've ever touched Adro is a thousand percent on point. So I would, these, there's things I can and can't say, um, gotcha. like what, what they're, it's all, it's all good stuff. I'll text you after, okay. um, <laughs> they're working on some like crazy stuff. All I can say is they have the money to do it right. Got it. And that's something we really like about it because if we sell a kit, it's not like, oh, I hope it fits. It's like this customer is going to love it if they can get over the price. Yeah. So their stuff is a little bit more expensive, but you know what you're getting every time you buy it. So I have no doubt that this is not like, I think this is going to fit 100% every time based on what I know about this company. And that's actually, see, there you go. I didn't know how much it was off the top of my head, but. Um, well, you got 3,100, but then you've got another thousand bucks in paint to have yeah. paint it right something like that yeah yeah i mean yeah that, i mean i don't think it would be that much but probably for install and everything i'd have brad do it yeah i mean you know the quality of the way it's done i i, I would agree with what brian said he has more experience with this brand mm-hmm. but i know some of the backing and some of that stuff and you know uh, you pay for what you get with the with the ex- exterior stuff i mean the 3d design stuff that i've done uh, you know, most of the Vorsteiner stuff is also very good. Yeah. Um, so, and we have the proper people uh, to do it too, Matt, to install it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I just, I'm mixed on this because I like, I, I, I'm used to the front and this doesn't correct the front. Like people, I'll just say people want it to do. They want to have an F80 or, or an M8 front on this car. So, I like it. I think it looks good. Um, Versus doing a Vorsteiner change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was, you know, this, uh, we're certainly going to do this first. I mean, and, and then um, I'm interested in your thoughts on, cause you can do this in, in ABS gloss black. You can do it. Brian, you have a version in carbon. Um, Mm -hmm. Vorsteiner has one. Um, What should I do here, guys? I mean, what's the, I'm going to leave, I think I'm going to leave the, the Yaray, whatever BMW performance front lip. Is there any real advantage for me changing that? Doesn't the front lip look decent stock? It does. I mean, it's the aesthetic that you want is what, is that what that is? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to just leave the darn, uh, you know, leave the front lip alone. Do the, um, do the vents. The vents, Mm -hmm. they drastically change the front of the car. Yeah. Yeah. When you look, it looks super. When you look at a car that has the the stock honeycomb look and then one that has the carbon, it's like, oh my gosh, like it's like you just went from a Kia to a Maserati. Like it looks, it looks complete night and day. Yeah. It looks 20 years newer. It does. I, mean, I, I my, cause my car came like that and yeah. with, without the honeycomb. And then 
the second car we got had the honeycomb on it um, because of the package that that guy ordered. And I was blown away how terrible it looked. I was annoyed. I was actually super annoyed with it. And then when I saw the Jare cars are going to have the honeycomb, because, you know, Matt, I told you, like, I have the same car coming that you have yeah. to match my, my techno violet. And then I started doing research on what they look like. And I'm like, man, I don't know why they wouldn't put the carbon piece there that makes the whole front end. Yeah. It's like BMW see if I can get a killing me here. So I actually haven't even seen this yet. So I'm not even sure like what, what different it's features. The, it's, what it's the, it, it has special seats. It has, it's, it's actually really cool because it has, they only offered five colors. It offered center bar red, which was an E30 M3 original color. Techno Violet for E36, Fire Orange, um, I'm sorry, Interlagos for E46, Fire Orange for E92, and Lime Rock Gray for F80. Like they're the, like the special M throwback colors, and it's a it's for 50 years of M. So this so, is my, yeah, this will be yeah. my car here, and it looks like they ship it with uh, optional stilts, you know, so it's. Optional. Well, they they definitely shot those photos with the um, shipping with blocks. the blocks in with the shipping blocks in. They really did, like yeah. unbelievable. So the grills, uh, isn't there something with the um, with the sensor or something like that that makes a difference between them? Yeah, the grills. If they have the the like um, lane, the auto. Um, Brian, help me out. What is that? The camera? I forget the name module, of it. I think. Yeah. It, they, yeah. The adaptive cruise control. Well, it, yeah, because it it's the I think it's the adaptive cruise control because it, it senses like how far in front of you the car is. And if they slow down, it slows you down. It's not just like a regular basic cruise. Yeah, control. it's like it's like auto cruise, basically. Um the grill, the grills work with both with with the camera and without the Vorsteiner does now. I don't see. I'm a, I'm a sucker for this one. This is what's on mine. All right. Yeah, that looks good. It looks like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm torn because I like this nothingness. Um, I don't know. Like I like to sleep on it and see. Yeah, I like the empty, but this is kind of cool looking. I mean, it's easy to change the grill. I mean, you could do it. You could do one and then do another. Yeah. Once you know how to get the bumper off, you know, it's it's easy to do. Um, you know, for me, the carbon, like I'm not, I'm, I like doing things in carbon fiber, but I have a line, and once you cross that line with carbon fiber, you have too much on the car. It can cheapen the car, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. So, like, I, I put the carbon four center grill on my car because we wanted to show the grill off and do all that. And then like, I was like, mm, I don't know if I really like it. Um, it's grown on me now, <clears throat> now that my car is pink too, but also <laughs> like th we did the AB we've done the one ABS grill on a car. And then we had a carbon grill that I did on a frozen blue car that we painted gloss black. And the one thing it did when it's gloss black is it looks OEM. Mm -hmm. It just has that OEM look to it with the, with the black. When which I liked. That, yeah, when you text me that, I was like, you know, that's you know, that's right up my alley. Yeah, and then I I think what would be really cool, Matt, and this is a little bit off, this is a little bit out in left field, but if you did the front, whichever front you do, and you do it in gloss black, it would be really cool to do the same like techno violet flake in it, like over the gloss black, really subtly, like you know, not everyone would see you driving with it. There'd just be a subtle detail that I think would be really cool on a Techno Violet. Um, I don't even know if my car has adaptive cruise control. <laughs> I don't think they do. Yeah, I, don't I don't think they do, so, man. Yeah. I, I think they totally didn't even have that as an option on these cars. Yeah, because you had the Yare package. It was like 99.5 or something like that, plus destination. And then I added carbon buckets. You couldn't choose the interior colors, black only. Uh, and, yep. and and then uh, carbon ceramics. So those are like, and then you just pick the color. So I don't I don't think it has that option on it. You'd think with my buying a hundred thousand dollar car that I would put a little more effort into this, but it's like <laughs> I become so jaded. Yeah, but it was it was pitiful. 
I mean, BMW didn't have any information. That's one of the reasons Brian probably is like, what are we talking, what are we talking about? Because the only reason I knew about the car is because Horacio at BMW blog, who's a really good friend of mine, texted me and says, you got to get this car. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And he sent me the code that you have to see like in the dealer thing. And I called my guy and was like, Hey, find this car. Cause I want it. They didn't even know what I was. I mean, the dealer never knows what I'm talking about, but they, they were, I like made them stop everything and look. Yeah. So I mean, even a little finding bit. stuff about it. So there's 500 for Euro, 500 for the U S. Um, I just think it's a, it was a cool package. I couldn't, I got an allocation immediately and they were, they were thinking of me. And so I'm like, oh, I'll take it, whatever, whatever I got to do. Um, and so I, I mean, otherwise I didn't, then I have to try to pick the color and I pick purple and you know, maybe it'll be, worth 50 bucks more at the end of the deal but right now they're selling you see they're selling for like 125 grand or something like that yeah i mean it's a cool car and they have not allowed i've been trying to order techno for a while and they've denied me they yeah. they'll say oh just get daytona violet i'm like no i want techno and yeah. now, <clears throat> now it's available so that's what i took the opportunity so cool all right so we'll, i'll have, i'll make a decision on the grills here in the next few days so grills so the bumper what i'll probably do is order one and then i'll just ha- you know it'll get it in eight months or whenever they come out and then i'll have it for car number two or <laughs> car number one depending on depending on when it comes in and then if i can't if i don't have a car i'm sure i'll be able to sell it because they'll probably be hard to get you know mm-hmm. right so we we did talk about the front vent trim and you should I should absolutely do those in um the little vents at the bottom in carbon you think mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah for the for the grill too I can send you whatever you want too and if you want to like if Sean's going to do the install or whatever just pop it in and like put the bumper on the car don't fully install it and then like look at them all like back to back to back mm-hmm. and then kind of see like what you know which one looks the best because sometimes when you see it on like different colors it looks different and whatnot too well that would also be a cool video to do it's just you know hey which one do you i don't think anybody's done that on video to show like here's Mm -hmm. here's here's girl number one here's girl number two and then have me do my thing where i'm yeah you should do that because you can actually pop the bumper has like a weird pop to it when you put it on so you can pop the bumper on and it's like 95 percent. yeah it's like 95 percent on yeah before you put like the 300 what, what is it 3200 pieces of hardware brian that's on the bumper yeah just about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're so the, the, what drives me nuts is they're different sizes um yeah like they're different world, lengths yeah, yeah like on the g80 it's like they use they were using like 10 mils and it was like oh finally they started using 10 mils and then i did a project on a, a g82 on slow speeds car and it was all eight mils and i'm like why are you using different bolts it's the exact same <laughs> location the exact same bumper everything is the same like just make up your mind bmw yeah well at least yeah. they're all hex because uh lamborghinis are like hmm, phillips on here and flathead <laughs> and allen it's like whatever they had in their in their <laughs> magnet on their lift is what they used hey as long as they tighten them down it i did a mclaren 720s project and i did a uh, 600 lt I swear to you, half the bolts were like hand tightened and it was like, I didn't even need a wrench and I'm like twisting out some of these bolts and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this car is $350,000. They didn't even tighten it on two yeah, cars. That's the UK. UK yeah. there. Well, their shop floor is white and looks really clean in photos. So people assume that you know, <laughs> they're going to do a good job. So reflector set, pretty much no brainer. I'll talk to the guys at IND and get them to make me a, a you know custom color. I'm, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll do it. Um, and then yeah, and the rear, I did the, I did the rear, I think, um, horizontal slat in the rear reflectors. Yeah. Um, this, this thing here. Yeah. It makes a like night and day difference in that look. This thing Just the rear right? of the, yeah. In the rear of the car. Uh, yeah. So we'll do those. And then the, the Yara has these freaking stupid badges. So I got to get rid of that. <laughs> I hate that. I like I like the black, the IND painted black ones. Well, I think they only yeah. these anniversary badges. I think they only look the only way they look good is if you have a car that is red, white, or blue that matches a color yeah. that's on it. Like if you try to put it on a gray car, you try to put it on even like a purple car. It's like I don't know. I just I just feel like it looks off. Yeah, I'm mixed on those too. I mean, I have literally the original M Motorsport signs that are those logos and people come in they're like hmm, 
what's that? What is that? Like it's some weird thing. And now it's on every car they made this year. And people are still like, what is that? So I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. I don't like badges. That are, and if I could take the darn BMW badge off, I would take that off. But I'm the guy that I take the M3 badge off and punt that in the trash. Uh, I take the Porsche stickers off and, you know, but that's just my style. I need to take a lot of heat for that. But so that'll come. Yeah, they, they saw that. So on the new one, I don't think you can do that because it's under the mm-hmm. the clear, I guess, mm-hmm. on the new RS. Yeah, screw <laughs> me. Yep. <laughs> yep. My touring's going to have that. So then uh, I'll do, you guys don't care about this, but I'll do all this crap myself, you know, the paint correction. And um, and then I'll do like the front lip protector, not for me, but for the, the, the other people that rent the car. Like on the Dragon, you'll scrape on the, you know, some, some of the switchbacks and stuff like that. So now let's talk about exhaust. Um, you guys have both played with a ton of different exhausts. Um, Sean, you make a mid-pipe. Um, the thing I was trying to figure out... Um, do you have to cut like Sean? Does your mid pipe? Do you still cut? Yeah, you have to cut. It's it's one piece. The exhaust is one piece from the downpipes back. Okay. So unless you replace the whole the whole thing, you you have to cut it. So your mid pipe does it eliminate the secondary cats or does it keep the secondary cats? Eliminates the secondaries and it deletes the resonators as well. So that's what I, I mean, doesn't that give you a little bit of power, you know, getting rid of the Yeah, system? it's like, four, we, we measured on the dyno, like, 14 horsepower. Yeah. It so, was only done for the sound, though. I, you know, I designed it because the car's too quiet. I didn't like it. I wanted to make something, and we made it. Um, and then I knew that it was going to add power, because I felt it. Um, you know, I didn't feel the 14 horsepower, but I felt, I felt like, because I know what we did and what we deleted, um, and it, and it did. So, um, but now we make one for the Acra because when I put the full Akrapovich on, it was too quiet on my car. Um, you know so my now, dis, you know my distaste with Acra, right? <clears throat> I do, especially, especially their full exhausts. Um, but you know, if you take care of yeah. the mid pipe section, then you know I'm inclined. My first inclination was to do. Oh, was to do the you know the PSI mid pipe acro rear section. Um, those will made up you know because you guys have made it to made up well, right? So I can just bolt yes bolt it together, cut the exhaust, bolt it together. Um, Brian, what is what does Daler do? Daler is there's it's just about like most of the mid pipe comes out, but the rest of the stock mid pipe stays. How how do they do it? Yeah, so they cut. So there's two resonators. So there, there's two secondary cats. There's two resonators, and then your your muffler section. It cuts between the two resonators. So that way it they have a, like the German TUV approval and all of that. Um, and it sounds it sounds really good. I've since switched to the AWE. Yeah. Which it, it cuts a, it just cuts out that second resonator as well. So my car, I still have four cats in my car okay. because the EPA is just going nuts on companies, you know, like us yeah. and Sean and all that. So we stay as EPA compliant as we can. So like, I'm, you know, I, I'm nervous about it. So like, I, you know, want to try to do as much as I can and be like fully EPA compliant, you know, as much as possible. So like, that's, that's the reason I did that. The reason I went from the Daler to the AWE is honestly just to get that extra resonator out. So, because it was just a little bit too quiet. Um, another thing BMW does that, you know, Sean's, right. Well, well aware of as well is the flaps in the exhaust. When you go to open them, when you're standing still, it only like cracks them open. It doesn't fully open them. Yeah. So we, we had a valve controller from Daler on there, regardless of the exhaust. And then that forces those bad boys open. So if you have a valved exhaust, you get the most sound out of it as possible. And it's funny because you don't think it's going to really like sound that much different but we have a video that compares like the before and the after. And it's like, oh my gosh, like why can't BMW just fully open the stupid valves? So it's just like silly little stuff BMW does. Yeah. So I've been buddies with the AW guys for a long, long time. It makes me interested in that, but um, I'm thinking that probably the PSI mid pipe and then, you know, you know, the Acra is probably the way to go. I don't know. Gosh, I mean, we're not making, I'm supposed to make it go wrong with Either option. Well, you, Sean, you have the, the Acura exhaust on still, right? I do, yeah. 
Yeah. Have you have you heard his car in person? Uh, no, I'll hear it. It's I'll deal with listening to it at SEMA. Um, yeah, I mean, I have the car there literally to drive around because Larry Larry Chen's had the car and he's just bringing it over to drive it. So you should just drive. You should just. We should make a video with the car and you can hear it like yeah. um, the way it is. Yeah, and then maybe we'll add the the Daler, um, which I have on the M2. Interesting on the M2. My, you know, Sean and I kind of had to try to figure this out. So my, my, they tried to, they tried to probably boot mod my, my M2. Mm -hmm. Previous owner. Yeah. Which is a post October, you know, 2020 ECU, their DME. So they just jacked up the whole thing. Right. So the car, the, 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 everything in the car worked with the exception of the valves. So hmm. The valves just wouldn't open on sport, or they just they just stay closed. We could we could get them yeah, to but, open but, with the tool. As soon correct. As you, I could do it with with the ISTA, and I could open it. So, yeah, the fix was the, that's the daily that I got from you, Brian. Yeah, right. it's full circle. We put, so we the, put the daily the on there, and then because the the S fifty five, I believe that the stock operation of the valves. Like they they kind of actuate the valves rather than just fully open and fully close. Right. Um, so the only disadvantage of the M2 that I have now is when I have full valve open, it is like, you know, it's pretty end to earth. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's pretty nasty. Um, um, but uh, but so on the on the G80, if you do so, like Brian, when you when you force the valves open fully, mm -hmm. it, is it like brain exploding drone or is it just normal? Is it? No, it's just normal. My my F80 is brain exploder, yeah. but my uh, yeah the the G80 stuff it's pretty tame. But I, I also I have four cats in the car. Yeah. Plus I have the AWE switch path on it, so I still have a muffler as well. So it's not yeah. like it's not straight piped or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So I mean, my two senses is that you we do it first, Matt. You install it, then we do the valves later. Yeah. Because it's just like that advice I gave you with suspension, like. Yep. You buy all the parts. Like you're one of those people that buy everything at once and installs yep. it at once. And then you're like, I hate my car now. And I don't know why. And it wasn't because of the dampers. It wasn't because of this. It was a sway bar. Like yeah. it was like a $10 part that now you hate the car. So like right. my opinion is do it without it. Cause like, I, I really like how my car is and yeah. I don't have the valves. I mean, Brian's absolutely right. Like if you want full control over them, you put the controller on. But for me, like with my car, I'm really happy with mine now. And I don't want things crazy loud, but when I get on it, it's loud. Like it sounds good when you get on it, but if I want to be quiet, I can't. So, um, yeah. are actives available? You know, they are. And of course you can get me, you know, make me a mid pipe, right? Yeah. And yeah, we can, we can so swing that pretty quickly. Another thing with the G80 that I found is the insulation is like too i mean my in my opinion the insulation in the cabin is too good and yeah. like when we first put exhaust on it it was kind of like it it doesn't sound that loud but then when you're behind the car you're like oh but it's like because i i had an experience where i had you know one of my friends driving the car and it was in front of me and i was like dang my car sounds so good and it's <laughs> like it doesn't sound the same when you're in the driver's seat because yeah you know they focus too much on like the luxury aspect where it's like you know, trying to kill out as much road noise, but you're like, you're killing my exhaust sound. Like, I want to hear it. Yeah, so. I mean, you're right. I mean, when I was on that turn 14 driver's project. We drove from LA to Monterey for Monterey Car Week and I had the G80 and everyone was like, man, your car is sick. And finally I rode with someone else so I could hear it. And it's a lot, lot I mean, it's a lot louder outside the car and it you hear the the popcorn like you like, Matt, the pops and oh, bangs. Lord, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> Looking forward to that. I freaking hate that crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's stock now. So yeah. yay. Be prepared. Yay. Nothing's worse than the darn um C sixty three where they're just you know, it sounds like a it's like a weird engine huffing through a giant straw that they put some <laughs> pops at the end of it to mask yeah, well, how it sounds. My new name for Mercedes is Chicken Foot. So that's what I call those now, and that falls right under it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so then I'll put a little radar detector in. Now let's talk suspension. Um, 
this is where I always make the mistake, right? My F80, I put a JRZ RS2 Pro, you know, and, and solid bushings. It was a freaking horrible experience. It was the <laughs> dumbest move I ever made in my entire life. I spent like $12,000 on this crazy suspension. It was miserable. Um, so I will never do that again. Um, I think with this car, I think I need to retain EDC um, just because people are going to be renting it. Just easier, I think, to 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 leave it you know, relatively stock. Do you guys think that you know this is going to be driven pretty aggressively in in the Carolina Mountains, you know, in the Georgia Mountains? Um, so it will be, you know, pulling one point one, one point two Gs. You know, it'll be it'll be you know it'll be rolling over on the sidewalls. Uh, our spring's going to be a a real. A, the car needs to be lower. Uh, we need to put spacers on it. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to keep the stock wheels. What, what should I do here, Sean? I'll let Brian. I'll let Brian go <laughs> first because I'm biased on this a little well, bit. I, I, I'm going to let Sean answer the spring question. I have a space. If you need spacers, we got spacers. Um, I have a, a comment on that. The G80, whenever you put spacers on it, regardless of the tire, you will rub your tire against the fender liner. That's fine. Just by the way. So you you might have to, we just trimmed ours because we got tired of rip, ripping it up. Yeah. Um, I run Sean's AST springs right now. And um, it, they I, it was funny because I when I first put them on, I was like, wow, these are like, I've, I've I've had way more negative experiences with uh, lowering springs than positive. Yep. And Perfect. when I ran Sean's, I was like, holy crap, it rides great. Like it was like I was really surprised that they actually <laughs> rode so good. Um, they sit pretty low, so I'm not sure how low you want. But as far as like, you know, performance and whatnot, like we 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 beat the crap out of ours and uh, it. it tends to handle well. I, I did, I will say I, I had a, a, a rubbing issue when I had three people in the back seat one time, but, um, that also, I also have a pretty aggressive tire setup. Yeah. But, um, overall like ride and whatnot, it, it's amazing. Simple Sean, no, no bump stop change. It is simple spring, spring swap. It's not necessary. They're, they're progressive springs that, I mean, I, you know, those springs, the AST always is on the softer side, but like I personally helped develop them on my car. So I gave them all my feedback and I made them no wheel gap. Like I made them exactly what yeah, I like personally we, would, would want. Yeah, we like the same like, thing, right? Right. Yeah. Correct. And that's, and I, that's why I like them. And I, and, and to be really honest, like without any bias, I think the car rides better than stock with the springs. Um, I think it, it just, it makes the car. Um, do you have them on here somewhere yet? Is H and R? They're they're on there. Yeah, they're right. yeah. they're up there. Yeah, that's it. Um, Gosh, I could spend three hundred bucks on to the suspension. That'd be amazing. <laughs> and, and I'll back up. I'll, I'll back up. <laughs> well, yeah, or spin zero. But I I think um, honestly, I think the G eighty is one of the best M threes that has been made. I think it blows away the F80 for, for me. Yeah. And I think it's, it, you know, if you set aside all the drama about the front, like I, and I, and I, I really think it's one of the best ones BMW's made from a daily driving perspective, from a performance perspective. I mean, I've driven my car, I have 22,000 miles on my car. We've driven it across the country. We've driven it all the way through California, done track days. We've done everything with the car. And I think it's one of the best. And I've and people have asked me that are old like us, like that had things that we knew each other 20 years ago. People ask me, hey, I, I want to get a G80. What do you think I should get? Is it really worth it? And I tell them, I really think I tell them the same thing. I think it's one of the best ones. And then they call me two, two of my buddies call me and they said, you know what? Like, I thought you were just bullshitting with me again, but like I love the car. And I hope. That's what you say to me, Matt. <laughs> yeah, because you're yeah. tough. You're a tough critic. <laughs> well, this car, the 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 great thing about this car for me is it's much more about driving it than it is looking at it because of where it's going to be at my house up there. Um, yeah, you know, it's not going to be daily driven around here. When I go up there, 
it's going to be to go hit the mountain roads, you know, and, and then, you know, if I'm going to go hit the mountain roads, I want it to be modified. I want it to sound good. I want it to look, you know, somewhat decent. And, um, so I'm not going to be looking at the front grills very much. And <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming they're going to grow on me like they do on everybody, you know, and the thing that I'm so stubborn on is that now we're, we're, I hate that we're proving BMW. Like they knew that people would just give up on it. They think that they're right. They're still wrong. You know, they still shouldn't have done this. They should have made better look in front end. But, you know, now. Yeah, right. but but they made everything else so good. Like the, yeah. the, the transmission, even the auto. I have manual in my car, but the auto is amazing. Like the the seats are amazing. Yeah. Like I love my carbon buckets. Like, so. I just always felt like the, the F80, you know, BMW sold their soul to the devil. Right. Because we'd always apologized for our BMWs being, you know, well, it's a better driving experience, even though it's slow as molasses, it's slower than everything else. And then the F80, they kind of sold their soul to decimate all of the cars uh, and it lost it lost me. Uh, and so now, well, if we're going to find out, I mean, there's only one to find out is to own it. And I'm hoping that this one brings me back to, you know, wanting to, to, to experience because nothing better than a new buying experience you buy a new car you know yeah if you go in with the like it's all about your expectation too because before i bought the the g80 i was looking at the f90 m5 mm -hmm. but i'm like i don't want to drive a, a land yacht like it's too big for me so yeah. um when i saw the the g80 come out it was like oh this is a lot different it's a lot heavier I looked at it as like a baby M5 because it, it is like when you compare it to like an E92 and, and whatnot, it, it's a wildly different car. I mean, I've got an F80 out back and it's like completely different car than that. It's more, you know, it, it, when, when people ask about the car, I'm like, oh, it's the best M5 I've ever owned. You know, it's like because <laughs> yeah. it's it's more of that. It's got that that extra luxury. It's got, you know, it's got a lot more size. It's got a lot more weight. Yeah. But the thing freaking performs, you know, like we have very yeah. minimal mods done to our car and the thing. It's stupid fast. It handles well for the first time. It has X drive, which, you know, down where you guys are, it doesn't really matter a tremendous amount. But I'm going to drive mine through snow and winter, you know, yeah. up here in Jersey. So it's like it just gives you like the best of, you know, in an M5, essentially, but in a smaller body. Yeah. So talking about performance, you know, Brian, I watched your video on the, the Daler piggyback. I'm not sending my freaking ECU to Russia. I'm not doing it. Guilty. Uh, um, <laughs> the, I mean, I probably don't even need the piggyback. Is, do you think the piggyback could be, you know, I'm going to have the car for a year. I mean. Yeah, do it. I have it on mine. You want 100 horsepower? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I like, I really like, like it. I mean, I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to do the ECU thing, um, but it's perfect, Matt, for you because you put it on and there's no adjustment. There's no buttons to press. Love it. It's on and you can tell. So that's, that's what I need. I don't want any freaking laptops. I don't want any nope. apps. You know, Plug I'm, and play. I'm not putting any freaking E85. I've never gotten E85 my entire life and probably never will. And it's just yeah, I'm on E60 back. right now. It's really fun to blend. Yeah, yeah, you know, my wife's like, yeah, let's well, the go. worst thing, like, worst, back. <laughs> the worst thing you can give Matt is like a knob to play with, one with like a hundred <laughs> clicks. I can't, they'd be like, I'm on 98 and it's great, but 99 is terrible. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> That's why I hate having I hate suspension modes, I hate steering wheel modes. I wish they would just pick one. That's why yeah. I love Porsche so much. Uh, and you know, just <laughs> it's like one mode, you Porsche, like a and that's the new one, even my new, um. Like the new GT3 RS, I'm like that's too much. Now you can adjust on the fly, you know, compression and rebound from the steering wheel. Like that's my freaking nightmare. Because then I'm <laughs> always gonna feel like it's in the wrong setting, no matter what I do. So yeah, shoot. So then we'll do the pretty standard. You know, anything wrong with the Eventuri intake? You know, I'm such a sucker for that waste of money. But boy, does it look good. You know, I think I've got three on the shelf right now. Yeah, that that yeah. I love. It that. sounds good. It sounds good too. You can yeah. hear it. You can hear the. The flutter of the bluffs and all and the intake i mean it's it's cool because it's it's an inlet as well it's it's part of the turbo inlet mm -hmm. so it it really it really incorporates into the intake of the motor Love they it. did a nice job and ron and Bilal did a great job with that one back to interior there really isn't anything to do in there is there i mean you wouldn't really 
you don't need to like do anything. So it all depends no. on really what you want. Like we did a couple little odds and ends. Like we did the Alcantara armrest, which is pretty cool. Um, what color interior did you get on yours? It's black. Black. All right. I mean, I had Silverstone. And like for me, like, you know, if I'm working on the car and like, you know, I don't want to like stain it or whatever. So it, I put the black in there to kind of break it up. Yeah. Um, I also put a P3 gauge vent, like a P3 vent gauge in, which is pretty cool. Takes up half your vent, which I'm not sure if Florida guys like with heat and whatnot, but um, it's, you know, you still get some airflow out of it, but you can look at your boost. You can look at your zero to 60 times, all that. Um, did you get the carbon interior? package i don't know like well it's it's whatever the uh the yaw right it's carbon yeah it's carbon fiber so one dumb thing that bmw does is you know you get all this carbon everywhere and then your left vent is gloss black so Mm -hmm. we have this little like piece of dry carbon we put on there um because otherwise like your everything else is carbon and and then you have this one little gloss black piece it just like looks out of touch Mm -hmm. it just looks like at like it's out of place um, yeah, but outside of that kind of stuff, it's not, I don't think there's really a tremendous amount unless you start to like change the wheel and that kind of stuff. If you, you know, do that, but again, I, mean, I have an Alcantara, I have an Alcantara wheel on my car, like the CSL one with the red, it has the red tick at the 12 o'clock mark. Yeah. Oh, those are cool. Um, which I just like the feel of the Alcantara I do um, too. and IND actually made that for me, uh, custom. Yeah, but I, I think you can buy the CSO wheel now, um, which is the same. Carbon carbon strut braces, Brian. You make those, don't you? Don't you have the? We the, have, uh, yeah, we have one that's that's finally in production right now that we'll we'll have in a couple of weeks. Um, but it's all we had it all designed from scratch. We have a we have an engineer on staff, and uh, it's all custom made aluminum pieces and all in, in carbon tubes. Yeah. Um, and, and ours has it, you can adjust the preload, which I haven't seen on any others on the market. Um, so you can adjust the tension and whatnot. And it's not just about how tight you put, you know, the, the screws and bolts in. Got it. I'll do the painted center caps. And then what spacer sizes do I need to do? What are you, um, what are you running? What are you guys running? Well, Sean, you have wheels. Yeah, I have, we do, we do tens and twelves is what we normally do. Uh, 12s in the front, 10s in the rear, but you can do. Um, what did you have on your stock wheels, Brian? On your setup, I want to say we did. We did a th- it was pretty much the same, but a 13 front and a 10 rear. Um, and it's funny because normally, like with the F80, I would put the wider spacer in the rear, but then I got the G80, and it was like, huh, it's like it's backwards from what I I did last time. <laughs> But I have uh, I have some Apex forged wheels on now, so I don't have spacers on it at the moment. But um, yeah, yeah, and that vent that you, that rubs that he's talking about, Matt, which which is a, like a crazy design from BMW. It's like a crazy vent that sticks into the wheel well. Um, we we've actually been heating them up with a heat gun and pushing them in a little bit. It sounds really weird, but it actually pushes it like two mil two millimeter. And it fixes the the rubbing. Um, you could try to do that because it's going to annoy you. It's a lot of times in reverse more than anything. So the cool thing about this car, I mean, I think this is probably a testament to to what they've done with it. This is like one fifth the list of what my list normally looks like. Like if we go look at, uh, you know, here's my here's my E ninety two, right. It's just the you know, list is like five pages long, uh, and then here's the uh, the M2. You know all the parts. That's multiple pages long worth of all the parts and pieces you put on the thing. Uh, this list is much simpler, right? I mean, yeah, I, w- I would definitely do the black badges, the black BMW badges that IMD okay. makes. The you know the outer edge. Yep. That make yeah okay. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Anything else we're missing here? For like what I, you know, based on what you guys have learned about what I want to do, like I'm not, again, I'm not sending the, I'm not buying another DME and sending it to Russia. Um, I'm not doing. And I can send you a roof box. You want a roof box like mine? No, I don't need that. 
<laughs> um, I, I don't want people. I don't want. I don't want people loading up like a bunch of crap in my car when I'm there. So, so the plan. What I'm going to do for now is that uh, I'm going to do. There's like cor a Turo corporate, so you can set up Turo. The only thing that's going to be a little odd that may get me in trouble with them is I'm going to deny anybody who wants to book it outside of you know my people. Uh, and so the the long term plan is to build a rental car company like an enterprise rental car or a rental car company. So I'm going to build a, a, a corporation that's rental car, a rental car. I think you have to do a C Corp. Uh, and then um, if I'm going to do that, I might as well build a dealership as well. So I can start <laughs> buying cars, you know, buying and selling cars through the dealership. Uh, and so I'll have a dealership Then the dealership will then sell the car, transfer the cars to the, to the rental car company. And then I'll get commercial insurance and, you know, cover it that way. Uh, but for now, I'm going to do Turo, which will you know, create the coverage for me. So that way, when people go to my house in the mountains, they can rent the house and they can rent the car. And I'm going to make it dirt cheap. It's going to be like a, maybe like a thousand bucks for a week or something like that. And I'm thinking about not even really limiting the mileage. Just go drive it, you know, go drive the thing, bring right. it back. And if I get a new one every six months or nine months, it'll only have you know, less than 10,000 miles on it. And what I'll probably do is do a giveaway on the car. Um, so if I can get either either special like this Yare or if I can get like paint a sample or what is it, individual, if I can get individual cars, cars that would be cool. That um, And then what I would do is bring the car back and then I would do that's when I do like a crazy front bumper and do a crazy suspension and you know take it mm -hmm. to the next level modification wise and then do a, you know, do a raffle on it or something like that. It's funny yeah. that you said that about you know, the other cars and how many mods you have, like my F80, I've got everything from a built motor to my, I, I added it up the other day and I've spent $175,000 between the car and mods. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a sketchy death trap. And my G80, I have an E60 tune. I have boot mode. I have the, the unlock. I have cat back exhaust. I still have four cats and an intake and some carbon. Yeah. And I ran a nine, a nine, eight. And I'm just like, I have like four mods and I ran in the nine. Wow. And I'm just like, I, I chased that in my F80 and I spend as much money as like, like I could have bought a Lamborghini, yeah. you know? And I'm just like, this car is so good from the factory. It doesn't even, it doesn't even need that much. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think is cool. Uh, that's what's interesting to me as I started to get into this today and I'm like, well, this is kind of doable. I've got maybe what? 12 grand, 10 grand, 15 grand worth of stuff tops. Like if right. I go full on, if I do a front bumper and go full on, I mean, there's not a lot of the most money here is the darn um, exhaust. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's pretty darn cool. I mean, that versus, you know, my E92, what are, what are my brakes? $42,000 for just the brakes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I got a darn, you know, Civic Type R or the brakes on that darn car. <laughs> You know, so this is pretty, it's pretty interesting that this car, you know, even though the car is going to be what 110,000 bucks will be less than my E36 when it's all done. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. It's a, I mean, it's a great car and, and honestly for the money, even you know, for one, whatever it is, 110, I had a customer bring us a car that had a $126,000 sticker. I didn't even know you could get one that had that. <laughs> Yeah, that was that expensive. That, right. um, but even for that, it's cheap for what you get. I don't know of any other car you can do what you can do with these cars. Yeah. Um, really? Well, now maybe I'm starting to get a little bit excited. Um, this is the first car I've ever bought where, other than maybe the Tesla. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, crap. Now I need to modify this thing. I don't know what to do. Because normally... I've spent, you know, hundreds of hours just reading and watching and figuring out, you know, I would spend like a full evening just thinking about spacers, right? <laughs> <laughs> and or, or like I'd spend like two days just doing exhaust video research and then complaining that nobody does fly by exhaust videos. So then I'm like, well, I guess I got to buy nine exhausts and then do it all myself. Uh, for no reason uh, whatsoever, other than to give myself an excuse for buying nine exhausts. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Well, thanks for the input, guys. I, um, uh, I guess 
I guess I'll, I'm going to finalize my list. I'll hit you up and we'll order all this stuff from, from you guys and um, make sure to go to, you know, go to precision sport industries.com and then go to, or just Google it and then go to, you know, keys motorsports.com. Check out Brian's videos, check out Sean's videos. Um, if you have a G80, um, you know, really any BMW, you know, hit these guys up there. I, I'm telling you the G80 platform, these two are the world's foremost experts. It's just, I got lucky that, Happen to be two of my friends, so <laughs> it worked out great that I could I can go to them at ten thirty p.m. on a Saturday to to help me figure out what to do, uh, and then hopefully you know you guys will help them out and buy some stuff from them. So that's that's the plan here. But anyway, yeah, thanks. For let's guys. have an experts. Uh, let's have an experts dinner in Vegas. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. I'll be there all week. So. Brian, you going all week? I'll be there. Yeah, well, Tuesday to Thursday, we fly out Friday morning. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll we'll cross paths. I'll text you guys. We'll go we'll grab dinner or something like that. And okay, yeah, let's keep changing the world. That's the plan. I'm, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Good for to watching. see you guys. And uh, well, my thanks G80 so much for having me. See you guys later. Thanks. See you.